Welcome back everyone, Oz here. Today we've got another r slash entitled people. This is also going to include some guest appearances from r slash entitled parents, so be prepared for those ones. I'm excited for that. Hopefully you all enjoy this episode, and don't forget to leave your opinion in the comments. And if you use gamer subs, use code odds at checkout. Every purchase made supports me directly. Silver Splash, you're prioritizing a dog over my baby boy? I recently flew out of the country for studies with my assistance dog. In the EU, sometimes you get a free seat for your dog to have their own space in the feet compartment. I got a priority boarding, so when economy started to board, I was already seated and my dog was already settled down. Cue in entitled parent. Excuse me, is that seat free? Unfortunately, no. But no one is seated there. Can you move the bag so my boy can have it? I was given that seat for my assistance dog to use. I'm sorry, but I cannot give the seat away. Unbelievable. You're prioritizing a dog over my baby boy. At this point, a flight attendant checked what was with the commotion. EP was escorted to their seats. They kept fussing the entire two-hour flight, complaining how people hate children now. The flight was not overbooked. In a matter of fact, it wasn't even a full one. The baby boy was about 10 to 12 years old based by look, and from what I saw, the entire family was seated together but didn't have a window seat. Yeah, people can be just crazy when it comes to flights. I mean, I remember maybe like two years ago, I was flying to San Diego for a wedding, and there was this lady who tried bringing on three carry-on bags, which is a pretty large number. The flight attendant told her, hey, um, you know, it's fine that you have those bags, but we need to check two of them down in the cargo space because this is a full flight. Pretty standard procedure. And she just lost her mind. She's like, I can't do that. Do you have any idea who I am? I've been to Europe. It was really awkward, but it pretty much turned into the flight attendant telling her that she would need to leave the plane if she didn't want to check her bags in because the plane was at full capacity. And, uh... She was some bickering later, and I remember she put the stuff in and actually, like, accepted the flight attendant's offer. And the awkward part was, so when the plane landed, and, like, I made my way to the parking garage, lo and behold, I get on the elevator, and she's in there, too, and she's, like, just on this tirade about how ridiculous she's been treated in this entire trip and how unfair people have been and how she's been to Europe, and she knows what she's doing, and it's just like, oh my god, please, stop talking to me, I don't know who you are. Entitled Parents. M-E-H-C. So apparently it's my fault you go to Duncan every day. First, let me say I'm honored that I have this much power in my coworker's life. I had no idea, and apparently I'm using this power for evil instead of good. Story time. Coworker is extremely behind on bills because her college-age daughter uses her credit card and racked up thousands in food-related charges in under one semester, over 5k. Coworker still gave her the card the next semester because she couldn't have a daughter walk to the dining hall and have food she didn't like, but was the food she already paid for, and didn't want to cook in the kitchen even though she paid for a weekly grocery delivery from the grocery store. But you know, I'm not a parent, so maybe I just don't understand. Anyways, a coworker is looking to save money. I grab coffee daily from the lunchroom. Basically, it's hot water that I add my own stuff to, coffee and creamer. Well, herein lies the problem. Coworker keeps forgetting to buy the coffee she needs. I am not sharing my expensive coffee with her. I draw the line. And by forget, I mean she runs to the grocery store almost daily because, you know, they need cereal the day they run out of the one they like instead of eating the other one in the house. Again, not a mother, so maybe this is normal, but if I tried that with my mother, I would not have eaten cereal. So instead of, oh, look at that, that's Amazon being used as a verb. So instead of Amazoning like a normal human being, she needs to grab Duncan every morning. Now, to the part where I am costing her money. We have free coffee downstairs and free cream, but again, it's downstairs. This coworker walks by it every morning and when she does remember to bring coffee, she forgets to grab the cream and messages me saying she's too tired and doesn't know what she's going to do. The thing is, I have cream at my desk. My cream is not the same as downstairs. You see guys, I buy my cream in flavors in the single serve variety, in large quantities, b because I'm horrible at remembering to buy it so I stock up. Theoretically, yeah, I have extra. The guilting texts come daily for weeks but never outright asking. I always say, hey, just grab some from downstairs. She told me that because she doesn't have cream, she now just stops at Dunkin' every morning. 
So because I won't share my $50 worth of cream, she's now telling me she goes to Dunkin', which she can't afford. I can see where her daughter gets it from. I figured you guys needed to laugh. While the coffee part is frustrating, the whole section about the fact that they've already paid for the daughter's university meals and get weekly groceries delivered, and she's still going out and buying a bunch of food and racking up $5,000 on a credit card every semester when food is already paid for? That is, there is... Okay, look. I'm not a parent yet. I'm 24. But there is... There, there is a severe mess up in parenting somewhere along the line that's led to this circumstance happening, where instead of her using the already paid for food that's in front of her, she's going out to eat on a daily basis. And after hearing the Duncan story, I think I'm more inclined to agree with OP, I see where the daughter gets it from. Angel698, Entitled Sister-in-Law Wants Custody of My Baby Background I'm 36 female, sister-in-law is 40 female. I've been married to her brother for over 10 years, and there's always been some jealousy and resentment from her. She's always felt like I had the life she wanted. Not necessarily with her brother, but the, the marriage. Family, job stability, etc. I have three kids, 10 female, 8 male, 3 months female. So this is unrelated to the story, but my brain kind of has like a bit of like an error when people list their kids like this. It's like, I have three kids, 10 female. It, <laughs> I know they mean the age. But every time it throws me for a loop just a little bit. She got married last year and they decided to start trying for a baby. But unfortunately, she told me she can't have children naturally. She was understandably devastated and the family comforted her as best as we could. We recently had a family dinner and in the middle of it, she says, Angel, I think it's really unfair that you gotta have three kids and I can't have any. Your baby is my last chance to raise a child, so I think you should just give her to me during the week. So... I can create a motherly bond with her and you can have her on weekends. Before I could respond, the entire table erupted with everyone talking at once, so I took my older kids upstairs. When I got back to the dining room, her husband was asking her what the hell is wrong with her and why would she even think to ask that. She was trying to justify herself when I asked them to leave. I also said that she's no longer welcomed at her house or around my children until she gets help. She started screaming that I don't deserve my life or my children and that I stole her baby from her. Her husband and mother-in-law kept apologizing and dragging her out of the house, still crying and screaming. Now my kids want to know why their aunt wants to take the baby. Edit, I've been reading the comments, but it's too many to reply to, so here's a few points. We have a security system and cameras already installed and no one has keys to her house. Two, I will not be able to get a restraining order as this one incident isn't enough to justify it. 3. My husband and I spoke to the older kids about it the same night, and we'll be having another talk with them to reinforce that sister-in-law is not a safe person anymore. 4. Our country does not have the right to bear arms, and I also have no interest in getting a gun. 5. I'll be informing the school and daycare of the issue and giving them her photo. For those questioning the validity of the post, I completely understand. If I had heard about this last week, I wouldn't believe it either, but it's unfortunately the situation I'm currently dealing with. There are further updates to this, but I want to give my initial thoughts. The five edits that she had to add are eerily telling as to how Reddit responded to it, and it's it's honestly just goofy. Getting a gun? <laughs> That's, come on. The school and daycare issue is actually probably one of the best ones here. The restraining order one, I can understand why people would jump to suggest that but restraining orders aren't an end-all be-all and they don't they're not as easy to get as you might think first update so my sister-in-law has been admitted to a psychiatric facility in the comments of my previous post i mentioned that her husband was seeking out counseling for them to deal with the infertility prior to this incident after the incident she sought out a psychiatrist rather than a counselor and they had their first session last week now, I didn't get the specifics of what happened, but basically, she made some statements that the psychiatrist felt indicated she was a danger to others, my baby and me, and she was placed under an involuntary hold. My brother-in-law has been nothing but apologetic through this entire ordeal, and he kept her away from us since the incident. Mother-in-law was staying with them to keep an eye on sister-in-law. She tried to leave the house in the middle of the night to see her baby. Also, brother-in-law found her researching how to induce lactation and she said it was to make sure she can feed the baby properly when I come to my senses and give her up. 
From what brother-in-law has said, seeing me breastfeed is apparently what triggered the entire episode. It was the first time sister-in-law was around the baby for any length of time, and she was holding her when she got fussy because she was hungry. Naturally, I took her to feed her and this made sister-in-law feel inadequate because it triggered the thought that she would never be able to do that which led to the events of the last post. I'm grateful for all the advice that was offered on my last post as some of it was really helpful. We won't be moving as it's not feasible for us at the moment but we have taken extra steps with security both at home and at the kids' school slash daycare. This whole thing is taking a toll on my family but mother-in-law, father-in-law, brother-in-law are taking care of sister-in-law and my husband and I are focused on ensuring the safety of our immediate family and minimizing the effect on the kids as much as we can. Update 2 I've had a few messages asking how things are going so I decided to update. I haven't seen sister-in-law since the incident happened and I also blocked her on all of my socials. My in-laws have been amazing through this entire situation and are not sharing any information about our family with her. Unfortunately, she still remains fixated on my baby. She tried to find out where the daycare is and even threatened to hurt herself if my in-laws didn't tell her. This led to another stint in the psych ward. She wrote me a letter, begging me to be fair and let me see her baby. I didn't actually receive the letter though, my mother-in-law read it and just gave us the gist of its contents. Sister-in-law's husband is working with her psychiatrist to see how best she can be helped, but he has said he doesn't know how long he can deal with this, but he's giving it six months. It's a very sad situation for her and I had hoped she would be able to deal with whatever is happening. At this point, we're completely no contact with her. We explain to our older kids that their aunt isn't well, so she won't be around anymore. We still see mother-in-law and father-in-law regularly, so I'm grateful we didn't have to cut them off. We spent the holidays with my family, and it was all very nice and uneventful. We're still on alert in case she escalates, but the hospital where she's warded isn't near us, and they don't live near us either. So we've accepted this as our new reality, and we're operating accordingly. Update 3 Firstly, my family and I are safe. Sister-in-law was eventually released from hospital to continue outpatient treatment with a psychiatrist and she's on some medication. My husband met up with her, her husband, mother-in-law, and father-in-law to get a feel of her mental state. She was very apologetic and seems to understand the issue with her previous behavior. She asked to see the kids and I, but that was of course a no and my husband let her know that she will have no access to us for the foreseeable future. Since she was discharged, mother-in-law has been awesome about letting us know when she would be at their house so we wouldn't run into her accidentally. Mother-in-law also told my husband a few days ago that sister-in-law has been saying that it's hard not being able to see the kids. She told him for information's sake and not to guilt him into changing our boundaries. Sister-in-law and her husband are looking into migrating to give her some distance in hopes that it will help her healing. I'm hoping for the best for their future, but it will be a future without my kids and I in it. Originally, my thought was that she should just adopt, find a mother who's expecting, who wants to give birth but doesn't want to raise the child, and she raises it herself, and um, go from there. However, with sister-in-law's behavior, I don't think she would make a good mother, and I think that she should never have children, if I'm going to be honest with you. This kind of behavior, as we've seen with her being committed, is not one that's conducive of someone who would make a good mother. It's very unfortunate, and... That's probably not what she would ever want to hear. But in my opinion, I don't think that she would make a good mother, especially with the fact that she's unable to actually understand boundaries, the fact that she even had a mental episode like this. The bright side is that she's surrounded by a family that will help her, but keep her away from, well, her nieces and nephews. I'd be curious to know if my initial reaction's too harsh, or, I mean, possibly not harsh enough. Uh, let me know in the comments down below, and as always, feel free to give your own opinions. Hangry Bubba. My petty manager thinks she can cancel my vacation because she couldn't take her vacation day. I, 30 female, am working in a small business. We have a manager who has been working here all her life. She has her own favorites in the office. These favorites are allowed to break every rule and do whatever they want without being questioned. Those who are not her favorites are always under scrutiny and loaded with the work responsibilities that are supposed to be done by her favorites. Since I started the job, for whatever reason, she made me target her hate. I am always respectful to her. However, she likes to make my life hell over everything. Initially, I was given work responsibilities equivalent to four people's work. Now fast forward to a few years, I am still doing work of a two-person job. She always throws tantrums like kids every time I get off. She goes to extra miles to create issues on days I am off and blame everything on me. 
She even made issues when I was hospitalized and asked our boss why I got special treatment. That leads us to now. I am going on a long vacation. I had told our boss about my plans and had it pre-approved even before making any bookings for stay or ticket. I put it on a calendar three months in advance with a note that it's been pre-approved. My manager was supposed to take extra off so she could have an extra long weekend. However, our owner said she would be off that week as well. Our owner didn't ask the manager to cancel her off or whatever, but our manager took it upon herself to cancel it. After doing that, she turned towards me and told me that since I have to cancel mine, I am canceling your vacation as well, which is scheduled in two months from now. I looked at her and I was like, what the fuck? I went to her desk, which is right outside where our boss is, and told her that she may cancel it. However, then she has to refund the money I spent on booking my flights, stays, and activities, which are non-refundable and amount totals to over $3,000 plus whatever my boyfriend spent too, and it'll be something she needs to do out of her pocket since our boss is not asking me to cancel. You are. Our boss looked at us and just shrugged, knowing that she had been playing games with me since the beginning and not wanting to get involved. Guess what? I'm still going on vacation. I'm also going through everyday torture of her petty comments about my vacation, but I'm gonna count it as victory as small as it is. Edit. So everyone who is confused why I am not changing my job. So I came here as a student and now I'm on a work visa. In order for me to continue working or have a visa, the employer needs to go through a very complicated and expensive process through immigration process. The process sometimes takes forever and even though every document is correct, the visa application gets denied. Once denied, we cannot apply for one year and we only get 60 days to leave the country. Also, if I get fired, then I get only 90 days to find a new employer or sponsor. The job role I have is not as special and most companies prefer to hire citizens or residents with work permits or green cards since it's the most cost-effective way. Oof, that uh, final little update there leaves a lot of implications about the manager's intentions, implications that I do not like. I'm gonna leave this one to you guys in the comments. I'd love to hear your opinions. I have my own, they're definitely a bit spicy. I think that the manager might have some problems with people who are on work visas. Or worse, sees them as a cheap source of labor that can't complain. But uh, yeah, I don't know. Let me know in the comments. R slash entitled parents, Owly Fox. Mom wanted me to delay hospital admission for a visit. Recently, I posted about my relationship with my mother. Her entitlement pushed me way too far. I spoke with my therapist and we agreed that I would go no contact until she genuinely apologized, which we both agree will probably never happen. I got a lot of good advice here and found you guys to be wonderfully understanding, so here's one more story. We'll be covering more of Owly Fox's tales in a future episode. Preemptive edit for context. I see a lot of confusion and that's my fault. This happened nearly two years ago, but at the time, she never really spelled out what she wanted from me, and as I am autistic, I never understood what she wanted from me. I thought she was just ranting. She spelled it out recently. She tends to accumulate your fault and then blow up in your face, sometimes years later. I am currently no contact with her. I used to know people like that. I gave birth to my son a whole month premature. It was spontaneous labor after a terribly horrible pregnancy. I had so many complications that I think my OB was amazed that I made it that far. My son went to the nursery for 24 hours for monitoring and then came back to my room. We left 48 hours later. My son was slightly jaundiced. My milk hadn't really come in either, but the doctors were confident and a nurse was scheduled to come see me two days later. So we went home. My mom had insisted she had to be there for the birth and I decided to allow it. I regret it now, but that's another story. She left not long after the birth and refused to come see us after. On day five, she called and asked that I come for a visit. She lived one hour from me. I was still heavily bleeding. My son seemed a bit too sleepy for my taste and we were waiting for the nurse. I told her so. She insisted I must come to her place. I placated her at the time by telling her maybe after the nurse's visit. Nurse came, took one look at my son, gave me a bottle of formula, checking his coloring with the machine, called the hospital to give them a heads up that we'd be on our way and sent us packing. While packing, my mom called back. I told her we needed to hospitalize my son. She then proceeded to tell me this story. When I had your brothers, three months early, they stayed in the NICU at the children's hospital for four months. Then they wanted to transfer them to a closer hospital to where we lived, by ambulance. Do you know what I did? 
I convinced them to let me transfer them myself and swung by to visit your grandmother because that relationship is important. Look, I I'm autistic, and at the time, I didn't understand why she told me this story. If it's not direct, clear demands, I'm usually oblivious, which usually pisses my mom off. She told me later that I could have swung by on my way to the children's hospital. The thing is, I lived less than 20 minutes from the children's hospital, and she lived an hour away in the other direction. At best, she wanted me to delay getting my son treatments by at least three hours. I say at best because once we're there, she wouldn't have wanted us to leave. She felt she was more entitled to my son than my son was entitled to be treated for severe jaundice. My son was brought right away to the hospital without delay and stayed for 24 hours under lights. We were sent home after that because my milk had come in and he was drinking plenty. His numbers had gone down, he wasn't so sleepy, and we had showed a willingness to use formula as needed. We were to come back to the hospital daily for blood checks until he was cleared, which we did. My mom insisted that it was not needed and we could skip a day to let her see him. She never offered to come see him, which could have worked. No, we had to drive to her. To be clear, she had access to a perfectly functioning car. We were willing to pay for parking. My house was fully accessible to her. She even had a key. We didn't skip a single day. She refused to talk to me for two weeks because she felt neglected. I got calls from three people telling me that I needed to be nice to my mom, that she had a hard life. Again, I'm on mobile. English is not my first language. I may share more stories. I would love to be a fly on the wall to see how she managed to spin this story to those three people who ended up calling you because that, that, that version of events would be very interesting to hear. And I'm sure if they actually heard that you didn't want to go and spend three hours visiting your mother because your child had jaundice and needed to be brought in for intensive care. Um, I, I don't think they would be uh, arguing too much with uh, with you and telling you to be nicer because this is this is ridiculous. This is genuinely just maddening. And I 100% sympathize with the direct and clear demands. I'm also not a fan when someone wraps their intentions and what they're asking for and this just massive convoluted request that isn't even actually a request, it's more of a, I'm trying to tell you to do this without you actually being told to do it, so when you do it, it feels like I didn't ask you to do it, it makes it feel more special for me. I hate that kind of stuff. I don't know if that's actually what it is, but that is what it feels like. Cabbage Floss. Entitled cousin thinks she can still be friendly with family after she sued them. This has been irking me for a while. I have two uncles that live on the other side of my country, and they mostly communicate with my mother via phone because they are all old. Uncle One, we'll call him Roger, is unwell, and a few years ago he had to move to an assisted living home. His daughter, we'll call her Barbara, lives nearby, and so does his younger brother, Uncle Two, who we'll call Kyle. Roger has had issues with drugs his whole life and wasn't the best parent to Barbara, so she understandingly hasn't always wanted to be involved with his issues. As such, he gave Kyle his power of authority, and Kyle has been looking after him to the best of his abilities, while also struggling with his own family issues. When Roger moved to the home, he sold his house to Kyle for a steal because it was in horrible shape. His druggy friends had been abusing it for years and it needed major work. Kyle spent a lot of money fixing it up and then was lucky enough to sell it while real estate prices were high in the area, so he made a bit of a profit. Barbara got word that a profit was made and wanted it. She fought Kyle for power of attorney over her dad and then sued him for the profit made on the house, claiming the money would go to Roger if she won. A judge agreed with her that Kyle should have given the profit to Roger, so she won several hundred thousand dollars from Kyle. The renovations he did on the house were not taken into consideration. So Kyle is actually out money. He didn't just have to pay the profit, he had to pay the difference between the two selling prices. Barbara, of course, didn't give the money to Roger, but used it for herself luxury vacations, etc. The whole family knew about it. Kyle had planned on using the profit to pay for better care for Roger, but she's left Roger in a crappy home because she didn't want to waste the money. Here we are, six months later and she's having issues with Roger and she still thinks she can make Kyle and my mother help her. No lady, you wanted the money and it comes with the responsibility of taking care of your dad alone now. The nerve of her expecting them all to still shoulder the burden, she insisted she had after suing our uncle shocks me. Unfortunately, Kyle is a lovely person who will let her walk all over him and doesn't want his brother to suffer, so she will get away with this. It infuriates me. 
Yeah, it infuriates me too. Money can do some pretty nasty things to people, and the fact that she was actually willing to fuck Kyle over like that and just throw him to the wolves, and the fact that Kyle is still willing to help, it... Ugh. And no, unfortunately, for those of you who are probably going to comment it, using the legal system is not an actual solution here, and the actual cost of litigation and putting things through the legal system is fucking expensive. Not to mention time consuming and overall just a stress filled hell. Uh, don't forget this is brought to you by Gamersups. Use code odds at checkout. It's basically a caffeine powder that you put in your water and I actually really like it. I use this on a daily basis. Don't forget that every purchase you make using code eyes directly supports the channel. And if you want a personal recommendation from me, I would either recommend the Soda Pressing Bear or Dragon Fruit Punch. Those two are currently my favorite flavors. And as a note, once we sell a certain amount of stuff, I get my own flavor and my own cup. And you all know I'm going to choose some degenerate shit that's going to make their PR team squirm. My goal is to make them regret partnering with me. So please, use code eyes at checkout to make my dream come true of making a PR team squirm.